for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. It pays to serve God. To serve God, and to love God, is the best decision anyone can make. Don't allow anything to stop, limit or hinder you from serving God. In the book of Mark 8, verse 37, the Bible says, For what shall a man give as an exchange for his soul? It pays to serve God, and it pays to be humble. Humility is the solid foundation for all virtues. There is nothing small in the service of God. When you put God first, everything else will follow. It's profitable to follow God, and His ways. A life without Jesus is like a journey without a destination. A life without Jesus, is meaningless. It has no value, purpose or significance. Great moves of God are usually preceded by simple acts of obedience. Obedience brings success, and breakthrough. I didn't allow my background to put my back on the ground. I didn't allow where I was coming from to limit me. I break the record in my lineage, by saying yes to Jesus. Thus, God changed my bitter situation into sweetness, my painful experience into gainful testimony and weeping into songs of joy. My husband died just after six months into our marriage, but God blessed me with another husband. God is the God of restoration. At the end of the tunnel, there is light. My name is Compassion. I'm a product of God's grace. I wisely followed the wise counsel of my guidance and mentor. In the book of Proverbs 11, verse 14 the Bible says, Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Listen to advice and accept instruction, that you may gain wisdom in the future. Proverbs 19, verse 20 I have an adorable, glorifying and, admirable marriage, and this is my story. My beloved daughter your love for me speaks volumes. Your love gives me joy, your love fills my heart with peace, your love is patient, your love is an expression of kindness, gentleness and faithfulness. I truly love you, but you have to go back to your biological parents, since your husband has traveled to the world beyond. My mother-in-law, I love you, but you don't love me. If truly you love me, why should you say such a thing? Please, why are you reminding me of my scar? Don't talk about scars here. I have many emotional scars, but yours is just a scar. I'm like a barren tree without roots and fruits. Let me remind you of my scars, three members of my family have traveled to the world beyond. It's more painful because I'm asking you to go back home to your people. You can't understand how lonely I will be without you, but I can't be selfish and self-centered to put your destiny on hold because I need your company. My daughter, I love you and I want the best for you because you are a kind daughter-in-law. My daughter, your happiness is my happiness. You are still very young, I want you to go back to your people and get married. I can't imprison you to leave forever without a husband, and I can't deceive you to wait for a child I will give birth to. Even if I give birth to a child today, before the child grows up, you will be a grandmother for the child. Besides I'm an old woman, and I can't get married. So please go back to your people. My beloved daughter-in-law, I will always love you. I will miss you. Goodbye. My mother-in-law, my decision is final. I am moving forward and not backward. I know you want me to go back to my past, but I can't. You also want me to go back to my unbelieving life and people, but I can't go back there. Jesus is the light that will brighten my path and destiny. So don't bother yourself. I'm not suffering from indecision. My decision is final. You are just a noise maker, you have to go back to your people. Even if you're living on a rooftop, I will stay with you there. I'm already part of you. Thus, your people will be my people. The God you're serving will be my God. We will leave, die and be buried in the same place. So as from now henceforth, I won't call you mother-in-law again but mama. I'm going on a journey of no return, forward ever with Jesus, 
and backward never to my people. Since you want to enslave yourself, okay let's go. Oh, who am I seeing like this? Can this be pleasant? Must you call my name? Don't call me pleasant, call me painful. There is nothing pleasant about my life, so don't dare call me pleasant else, I will teach you an unforgettable lesson. I'm going through the wilderness of life, so don't mock at me. There is nothing pleasant about my life. My life is like an empty bucket without water, and my pillows are my own children. Pain and sadness are my friends. I am now like an orange without juice. My daughter, must you go out now? You have to rest for some days. Besides, you don't know any area in this vicinity, can't you wait? Mama time waits for nobody. I have to step out of my comfort zone. Mama the ant has a message to pass across to us. In the book of Proverbs 6, verse 6 to 11 the Bible says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. I don't want to be lazy, else we will die of hunger. I have to work extremely hard to gather food for us during this harvest season. My daughter, do you want to be busy more than an ant? Okay, since you are eager to gather food for us, may the favor of the Lord go with you. Amen. Good morning sir, please can I glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters? Who are you? I hope you're not one of those prostitutes who usually appear during the harvest season to manipulate us with their sweet and flattery words, and at the end of the day, they will collect our money, and later on disappear after making many unfulfilled promises? What makes you think I'm one of your customers? Sir, do I look like a more or less and valueless woman? Don't blow your own trumpet. Can a bad person tell you he or she is bad? Let me clear your doubts. My name is Compassion. I am from Utah. My mother-in-law's name is Mama Pleasant. Is that your beautiful lady? Sir, that's an expensive joke. She's not my lady. She is from Utah, the daughter-in-law of Auntie Pleasant. She is very polite. Let me quote her words. Please can I glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters? Sir, there's something special about this lady. She is hardworking and this immediately reminds me of an ant. She has been working since morning until now, except for a short rest in the shelter. Learn from her, and be hardworking. You're saying she's hardworking because you guys are a bunch of lazy individuals. Sir, I regret telling you how hardworking compassion is. How can you compare Christmas and Sunday? My daughter, my name is Soundness. You're highly favored by the Lord. Why did you choose to gather grains in my field? The Lord is my guidance. Hallelujah. Please stay here with my servant girls. The Lord is your security and nobody will harm you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. My daughter, you are free to eat and drink with others. Sir, why do you choose to favor me like this? One good turn deserves another. You're treating your mother-in-law like your biological mother. Thus you deserve a special treatment. May the Lord richly reward and bless you, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord be gracious unto you, and may the Lord change your story in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sir, I appreciate your kindness, care, and concern. Goodbye. Oh, look at a smart lady coming. Let me declare my fake love to her, since many ladies like to hear the word, I love you. Princess, good evening. I'm Jackie. Good evening, I'm Compassion. You're charming and you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31, verse 30. Are you not also fearfully and wonderfully made? Don't bother yourself. I know I am fearfully, and wonderfully made. You can't use your sugar-coated words on me. I love you please, be the only fish inside my ocean of love.
Jesus loves you. Give him your attention. Jesus is my lover, he's the best lover. I don't need the love of Jesus, I need but your love. Since you are pretending to be in love with Jesus, you have missed your luck, you are a village and uncivilized girl. I prefer to be a village girl for Jesus, than to be a player in the dirty game of love. My beloved daughter, in whose field did you gather the grains today? Mama, in Mr. Soundness' field. Soundness, is one of our close relatives. Lord, we thank you for provision, favor and for bringing my daughter home safely. Amen. Mama, on my way back home, a stranger declared his fake love to me. Saying I love you, not knowing I'm in love with Jesus. My daughter don't allow any love parasite to deceive you with their sugar-coated tongues. Their love is like a filtering basket that can't carry water. My daughter, I'm praying seriously for God to give you a husband. Mama that's interesting, do you think a man from this community can get married to a stranger? Besides you know my people are considered as unbelievers. My daughter, but you are not an unbeliever. Remember your words, your people will be my people. We are one in Christ Jesus. My daughter, may the Lord bless you with an adorable and glorifying marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mama, what is an adorable or glorifying marriage? An adorable or glorifying marriage is an affectionate, honorable, delightful and lovable marriage. My daughter, shall I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Mama, will you go to the market and buy a home for me? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, oh my daughter is ignorant. Don't bother yourself with God, all things are possible. My daughter, I want you to have a quiet resting home. In the book of Isaiah, 32 verse 18, the Bible says, And my people shall dwell, in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. May the Lord give you a restful marriage and not a stressful marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. My daughter, I am prophesying into your life. I want you to have a home of joy. Receive marital peace, joy, rest and happiness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mama, how can I make my marriage to be adorable and glorifying? My daughter to have an adorable marriage, be positive. A positive mind attracts positive things. A positive mindset is a gateway for blessings and miracles. Don't go into marriage with a failure's mentality. And don't allow the sad experience of your late husband to hinder you from enjoying your marriage. Furthermore, to have an adorable marriage, choice-making is significant. Who you open the treasure of your life to is significant. As a child of God, if you marry someone who does not know or fear God, then it will be difficult to have an adorable or glorifying marriage. Mama, that means the fear of the Lord does not only give wisdom, it also gives spiritual joy and marital joy. Thus, the fear of the Lord is like the morning star that ushers, in sunlight, of comfort and hope. Also, to have an adorable and glorifying marriage, who you serve matters. Your marital success depends on who you serve and how faithful you are in serving Him. If God is your Savior and you are serving Him, and obeying His commands, having an adorable marriage will be easy. Mama, for that reason, I will continue to serve the Lord, because in the book of Luke 9, verse 62 the Bible says, Then Jesus declared, No one who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. My awesome daughter, I know you will make it maritally by the grace of God. Amen. Besides, to have an adorable and glorifying marriage, don't get married to a baby. Mama, but it's not normal for babies to get married. They are still kids. My daughter, a baby here refers to immaturity. If you get married to an immature man, it will affect your marriage, negatively. Immaturity is one of the major causes of marital battles. In addition, to have an adorable and glorifying marriage, who counsels you matters. If you receive counsel from the wrong people, there's no way you will have an adorable marriage. Mama, I'm fortunate to have a wise counselor like you. Lastly, to have an adorable marriage, your courtship is essential. You can court rightly by saying no to anything, 
that may displease or jeopardize your relationship with God. Mama, you are the best counselor. Stop flattering me. My daughter, faith without action is death. I desire a home for you, and now you have to take action. Mama, am I an actress? I'm not qualified to act. My daughter, pay attention and listen to me carefully. Tonight, soundness, will be at the threshing floor. I want you to dress in your best outfit. Perfume yourself and look smart. Listen and take heed to the following instructions. Go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Go there and uncover his feet, that will be the stepping stone. Mama, I'm afraid. He may think otherwise about me. My daughter follow my leading. Okay Mama, I will do whatever you say. Who are you and what are you doing here? I am Compassion, your servant. Please cover me with your garment, for protection, since you are my relative. My daughter, may the Lord bless you for coming close to me. You're an example of dignity and respect. You didn't run after young and flashy men. My daughter, I will protect you. But I don't have the upper hand to conclude things for myself. But if I have the opportunity, I will marry. Please, can't you decide for yourself? Or do you want to seek God's guidance and leading? Yes, you know prayer is the key. Besides, there's someone who has a higher authority than me. Just stay positive. Take this parcel and go back home. I will get back to you. My daughter, I have been waiting for you like a student who is waiting for her examination results. How did it go? Mama, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. We're on the journey and may the Lord conclude things for us, in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord give soundness no rest until the matter is settled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Did you miss your way? I'm surprised to see you here today. I hope all is well. Auntie Pleasant wants to sell the piece of land that belongs to our late brother. Are you ready to buy it? Yes, I am ready. But I hope external strings are not attached to the land. If you buy the land, then you have to get married to Compassion, the lady from Utah. I'm interested to buy the land, but I don't want the widow. It means I can go ahead to buy the land and get married to Compassion. As it pleases you. After all, you are a bachelor. Use this opportunity to free yourself from bachelorhood. I am happily married. And I am enjoying my marriage. An adorable or glorifying marriage is not by accident. It comes out of a good choice making, by involving God into your marriage, sufficient preparation for marriage, understanding, commitment, prayers, forgiveness and the determination to make it work. I have the following counsel for all the singles out there. Don't conclude on your situation. God is never too late, He's always on time. When the right time comes, God will give your future partner no peace or rest unless he or she locates you. Also, my beloved sisters and brothers, follow wise counsel. Who speaks into your life and counsels you, matters. Besides, there are many distractors on your journey to marriage. Beware of them and their fake promises. In addition, serve God passionately. Moreover, the past is not your final destination when you trust God. In one season, I am working in the field, but in another season, I am the owner of the field. In one season, I am a widow, but in another season, I am a married woman with a child. In one season, I am begging for crumbs from the harvesters, but in another season, I have more than enough. Hallelujah! May the Lord give you the wisdom to choose wisely in the name of Jesus, Amen. May the Lord bless you with a peaceful and restful marriage in the name of Jesus, Amen. I hope you are going back home with a take-home message from my story. Thanks for listening. Please like, share and subscribe for more.